Okay, well, um, welcome everybody to our uh, Excel versus Power BI webinar. Uh, my name is Brian Wilford and uh, I'm going to be your host for today, just taking you through this uh, presentation. Uh, I've also got present with us uh, Robert French, who's the presenter of the webinar itself. And Robert's going to be running through this, you know, very interesting uh, comparison between Excel and Power BI. Uh, before we start, I'm going to go through a few very quick uh, things, just to give you a quick uh, agenda. So we're going to look, first of all, briefly at Academy. Um, the intention then, obviously, this is not a sales pitch, but so you've come to the webinar, so I want to make sure that you know who we actually are. So talk a bit about who we actually are, about us. Then there'll be the webinar itself, uh, and then there'll be a Q&A during the webinar and actually at the very end as well. So that's the plan. Uh, so I guess then, first things first, just to say very briefly, uh, who are Academy then? So we are a, a UK-based data services company, founded in 2008. Um, and we deliver, a, I guess, the full data lifecycle services. That is really from um, the initial data quality, data remediation part, through to the uh, preparation of data, uh, to the ETL, um, uh, and then to the consuming of the data with the uh, visualizations, and also analysis, uh, doing things like uh, you know, predictive analytics, uh, machine learning, and AI. So it's a kind of full range. Um, and in amongst that, there's the data management, elements as well, such as uh, data governance and uh, mass data management. We are agnostic in terms of software, so although we are, have expertise in Power BI, we also have expertise in lots of different technologies, um, and uh, we have to be partners with uh, Tableau, Alteryx, and Domo, and have a kind of a, a, an expert a base knowledge in uh, Click um, business objects and my strategy as well. So, you know, it's a kind of a fairly wide range of, of technologies, but they're all really in the sort of business intelligence space. Um, so really you could say that we've got, I guess, four kind of main areas that really we, we deliver in terms of services to our clients. That is data management, uh, business intelligence, uh, analytics, and also software development, we have a software development team. And we develop custom solutions as well as our own applications and software. Okay, so that's a very quick overview of my academy. I'm going to hand over to Robert now, so it's going to come out of my presentation and stop sharing, and um, I'll pass on to, uh, to Robert. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Brian. I'm just going to share my screen. Hopefully you can see the presentation. Fantastic. Okay, so this session is titled Excel versus Power BI The Grudge Match. So we're going to treat it a bit like a boxing match. So in the green corner, we have Excel well-respected, trusted program. Everybody uses Excel. Uh, I was doing some research yesterday and I found out it was released in 1985. So it's over almost 25 years old. That's a long time for any program to be around. Now, everybody uses Excel. Rocket scientists even use Excel. Data scientists use Excel. I use Excel. So people rely on this program a lot to do many things. Now, in the yellow corner, we have Power BI. It's a new kid in the block. It's the young whippersnapper. It was released as Project Crescent in 2011. Uh, the current version that we see today was released in general release in 2005. And Gartner Report, if you believe such things, called it the leading BI tool in 2019. And I believe there's a couple of reasons as to why it has garnered such praise from the Gartner Report. So just to introduce myself, obviously I'm Robert French. I work in sunny Glasgow, we've got sunshine today. and I'm a consultant with iAcademy. These are my contact details. I would love to talk to any of you about data. That's what I love doing. Now, first of all, let's have a confession. I've been working with Power BI for some time now. It was about 2013 in another consultancy. I first came across Power BI when it was released as part of something called PowerView as part of Excel 2010. And even from that very early point, I can see so much potential in Power BI. Now, next, let's be clear. I both love and hate Microsoft products on equal passion. If you had been in my office about a week ago, you would have heard me saying some rather naughty words about how Microsoft had changed something in the Power BI interface as I was trying to implement a particular feature for this presentation. So there were some naughty words said and I gave them my feedback and told them I didn't think they should have done that and told us what changed. Anyway, I still love working with it. This presentation is going to go rather fast. I have so much I want to tell you, so much I want to share. That said, 
there will be time for questions later on. In the Zoom application, there is a question and answer panel if you want to pop the questions in there. Uh, someone will stop me in the middle of the presentation if I need to answer something, but hopefully please keep them to the end. I love talking about data. I love talking about Power BI and anything to do with data. So please tell, please uh, ask me questions later on though. My presentations are quite different. That's just the way I am. Hopefully you've just realized that from the, as I'm currently doing it. So I hope you enjoy the journey. First question is what are we going to talk about? Well, I'm going to turn on its head first of all, and I'm going to say, I have a single goal for this presentation, a very simple but single goal. That is that you will go away from this presentation and if you've never looked at Power BI, you will have a look at it and say, I wonder if it will be any good for this particular business process. If you've looked at Power BI before and you thought, mm, maybe not, maybe you'll come back and think, hmm, maybe I should give it a second look. So that's my goal for this presentation for you as my audience. Then we'll move on to talk about the elephant in the room. 10 reasons why people use, per, uh, use Excel. It's a fantastic program. We'll just go through 10 reasons why people use Excel. Then we'll consider change. Change is a scary thing to say. I don't like change. Change, why should you change something you've been doing for many years? Why should you change a particular business process that maybe uses Excel and consider using another product possibly like Power BI? And we'll try and consider that and give you reasons as to why I think you possibly should change. Next, we'll do something really scary. They tell you if you ever do a presentation, never, ever, ever, ever do a live demo in a presentation because it's going to break and things are going to go wrong. But I'm going to try that today. Now, we're also going to talk a little bit about licensing. Any of the tools I show you today are free unless I specifically say so. Uh, but however, if you want to share reports securely in Power BI, there is a little bit of licensing and a bit of money involved. So as part of the presentation, I'm going to build a report that looks like this, but we'll see a bit more about that later on. What are we not going to talk about today? We are not going to talk about the entire Power BI architecture or ecosystem. There's so much in there. It's just fantastic. Yeah, I could spend all day just talking about the individual components. What we are going to look at today, though, and this morning, is Power BI Desktop. And as we're talking about that, we're going to mention a couple of things in passing. We're going to talk about the DAX language. I'm going to show you that briefly. We're going to talk about the Power BI mobile application. We're going to briefly touch on Power BI licensing and we'll maybe briefly touch on the Power BI service. And then I'll be finished and I'll, yeah! And then it's time for what I call stump the chump, as someone once said. Ask me a question I can't answer. I love answering questions about Power BI and I would love to hear your questions. So let's get on with the presentation because that's what you've come here for today. Right, 10 reasons why people use Excel. Reason number one. It's really easy and simple to pull data in from a variety of data sources. You've got a CSV file. It's really simple just to pull it into Excel, isn't it? You want to pull data from a database like SQL Server. Really simple. Just use Excel. Reason number two, and this is one I personally identify with. Sometimes it's just easier to get the data insights yourself. Why do you have to go to the IT department, ask for a BI analyst to come and look at you and design your report just to get that report, which you know you could do and you know exactly what you want. So yeah, sometimes it's just easier to do it in Excel and I understand that. Reason number three, there is a huge support base out there. People have written, I've got websites, YouTube channels, blog posts, all about challenges they've resolved using Excel. So as lots of people are able to help you overcome the challenges you find when you're dealing with Excel and challenges you're dealing with as a business. Reason number four, most people when they get their new laptop or computer already either has Office 365 or has Microsoft Office Suite installed. So it's a bit kind of silly not to use Excel. It's free, it's there, so why not use it? It's very simple. Reason number five, Excel is very flexible. It's amazing what you can do with Excel once you know what it can and can't do. Reason number six, I like this one because it means that there's something in Excel for everybody from a complete newbie who's never used Excel before 
uh, all the way through to a power user. And when I think about a power user, someone who is very comfortable with Excel formulas, maybe is comfortable writing some VBA code, Visual Basic for Applications, which many programmers use. I've used this to resolve in a couple of issues, uh, challenges when I was working and using Excel for something as well. Number seven, Sometimes you don't want the entire cake. You don't want that 100 gigabyte database. You just want that slice, that month's data. And Excel makes it really easy just to get that bit of the data you're looking for and to hone in just that bit of data. Reason number eight, it's a bit controversial. You can use Excel to build a simple database. Yes, you can build a simple database using Excel, but if you want to do something more complex, come and see us at iAcademy. We'll explain the ins and outs and what options you do have because Excel can only take you so far. Reason number nine, it's a transferable skill. It's a sellable skill. So if you go for a new job or you want promoted, Excel is something, a good thing to have, Excel skills. Number 10, I suppose this one's a bit obvious. Excel makes it really easy to analyze data. That's what it's built for. That's one of the functions and purposes of it. Now, I'm sure you're looking at the screen, you're saying, Robert, you've missed out that feature and this feature and that feature and this feature. I can't cover them all. And there's lots of reasons why people use Excel. And I'm sure the one, the reason why you use it is the one that's most important to you. So where are we now? Let's talk about change. Why should you change? Why should you stop maybe using Excel for a particular business process and use another tool? I thought about this question when I was preparing for this presentation and I tried to think, well, why would you change? And I began to think about, uh, say someone who's a cabinet maker, who's a lovely workshop and it's full of all sorts of different types of tools. When you walk into the cabinet maker's uh, office, a workshop, you'll find there's all sorts of different types of saws. You'll find there's different types of planes, long chisels, wide chisels, thin chisels, different types of files, different types of hammers. Each one has a different purpose and function and the craftsman knows which one does what correctly. And one of the first jobs I had when I left university was working in a mechanical workshop. And every single time served mechanic who had been through their apprenticeship and became, it was actually a mechanic, had this big, huge tool chest on wheels. And it was full of a plethora of tools. They had everything in there, not only spanners, they had torque wrenches, they had meters, they had hammers, they had all sorts of things but they knew that certain tools were perfect for certain jobs. It's not that every tool was suitable for every job. Now, with a pair of scissors, that's fantastic for cutting hair. It's great for cutting paper, but you could also use a pair of scissors to cut your lawn. But why would you? Why would you use a pair of scissors to cut the lawn? Well, I'm sure in every single garden shed, there's a perfect tool that's been designed for that specific purpose. It's cutting a lawn. It cuts grass really well and does it very efficiently. But you wouldn't use a lawnmower to cut a bit of paper. Well, you could, but I don't know what you would do with it. Or you wouldn't cut your hair with a lawnmower. So particular tools are designed for particular purposes. And that's where I think Power BI comes in. Because I want to look a bit more closely at Power BI as a tool that's designed for certain purposes. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes I go along to seminars or training sessions and someone will use a word or a phrase and I'll be too shy to actually ask, what does that mean? So I want to explain a couple of terms I'm going to use today as part of my presentation. The first one is ETL, Extract, Transform and Load. So what we're going to do as part of the presentation today and part of the demonstration is we're going to extract some data from an Excel spreadsheet. I'm going to transform it. I'm going to make some changes to it using a tool called Power BI Query Editor that's built into Power BI Desktop. And I'm going to load the data into Power BI Desktop. So I'm going to do some ETL. We're also going to talk quickly about fact tables. Fact tables contain facts. So if you're a supermarket, your fact table may contain how many Bean, baked beans you sold on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday with a date against it. And it would also have a stock number repeated many times, the same stock number for that particular type of baked bean tin. And that stock number go back to what's called a supporting dimension table, which contains details about that particular 
fat or that detail about the fat, for example, in this case here, would be the type of baked bean, the size of it, the type of baked beans in the cost of tin, and the supplier should be one row. We'll talk about those later. I just want to introduce that. When Microsoft launched Power BI, they had a particular strategy in mind. They wanted to turn the IT pyramid, if you like, on its head. Because what would happen previously, and still possibly happens in many organizations, is the end user who understands the data really well, who understands the business processes they want to model, demonstrate, and measure, has to go to the IT department and say, right, okay, we need a report. We need you to do this. They need to explain the data. So the IT department has all the IT knowledge and expertise, but they don't have, they have very little of the the knowledge of the data or the business processes at the end. So what Microsoft's trying to do is actually turn this on its head and empower the end users to, with a tool like Microsoft Power BI, to find the insights into data and tell data stories and then pass that report back to IT to manage and pass out to the organization. And it's, I think a term I quite like is citizen BI. When I think about Power BI as well, I think about Lego. I constantly think about Lego because I, I think of Power BI a bit like Lego. You got these lovely building blocks, small building blocks, and all you do is you all fit together. And as you fit these small building blocks together, you build something very complex using small, simple building blocks. And very often it's just your imagination or your insight that allows you to build something fantastically complex. Now, we're going to do something really, really scary for me today. Uh, and what we're going to do is do a demonstration. And this slide here is to remind me to have I started demo. No, I haven't. So I'm going to press escape and come out of the PowerPoint presentation. And I'm just going to minimize that. Now, we are going to do, we're going to look at a couple of things today. And after the webinar, we'll send out a link with some information. One of the things we'll send out is a link to this particular page where you can download Microsoft Power BI Desktop. This is a free tool. This one just happens to be updated on the 5th of May. And the one I happened to have installed was a 64-bit version, just because it suits my particular PC. Now, next, I'm a cyclist. Yeah, I love the Tour de France. So what we're going to do is pull in some data from our web page, okay, from one of these HTML tables. And then what we're going to do in front of you, I'm going to build the report. It's going to take about 20, 25 minutes. And I'm going to build this report you see in front of you. Okay, an exact duplicate. As I click on each particular flag, you'll notice that it's moving and updating the data. For example, if we go to Germany, it updates the table and shows all the cyclists from Germany won the Tour de France and updates this value here, but also updates the map. So if I go to say Italy, we can see that there's been seven people have won the Tour de France and between them have won 10 races. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and they've won 10 races between them. And all I'm doing is clicking on this, and I will build this in front of you. Okay, maybe a very bold thing to say, but I'm going to try and do that. Okay, so let me just open up Power BI Desktop while I'm doing that. Just to show you, I have nothing up my sleeves. All I'm going to say is I'm going to do all this without doing, without creating any code apart from the DAX expressions. That's the only thing I'm going to build today is I'm going to show you some DAX expressions because we have to do that just to show you a little bit on the desktop. So just to demonstrate that I'm not doing anything particularly special, I'm just going to open up Power BI Desktop, my machine, as you can see. I'm just going to minimize that and pop that down because we're not going to use that right now. Make that a bit smaller. Now we said earlier that Excel is able to import data from a number of different data sources. Obviously, Power BI Desktop can do the same. Well, I guess it comes with the territory, it's a report tool, so therefore it's able to import data from a variety of data sources. Some of them you'd be familiar with, Excel, Common Delimited Files, JSON, XML, various other things. Some of them you might not be as familiar with. Okay, I'm not going to talk through them all, you can explore my leisure because you can download this tool for free. This is 100% free. You pay nothing for it. But as I said earlier, what I'm going to do is import data from my web page. Okay, so I'm just going to select that. And I'm going to click on connect. In the moment, it's going to prompt me for a URL. So if I pop up to the web page here, do a right hand mouse click and click copy and pop back to Power BI Desktop. 
I'm going to pop in the URL. Now, one thing to note is I'm building, I'm using no code whatsoever. I've done nothing to the, I've written no code. But what it's going to do is go out to the web page and see if it recognizes any HTML tables it can extract data from on that web page. If any of you have ever done any web scraping, as a technical term uh, programmers often use for extracting data from web pages, you'll know how painful it is. Uh, I'm currently doing that for some other uh, Tour de France results using uh, Python, which is a programming language, an extension called Beautiful Soup. Beautiful Soup means that you can extract data from web pages, but believe me, you have to know HTML very well. And it's quite painful. Now, because I'm a man, I can't do two things at one time. So I've forgotten which, what uh, table I wanted to import data from. So I click on the web view just to remind myself. Pop down here and the table I'm looking for is Tour de France General Classification Windows. Oh, fantastic. And we've got the table named here as well. So just tick on that box to select it. So this is a table I want to import from the web page. Now, remember earlier we talked about extract, transform and loads. We're going to extract the data from the web page. We're going to transform it and then we're going to load it. So we'll just transform the data because a couple of things we need to do with the data source. Very rarely do you get a clean data source you immediately use in the report. Sometimes we're really lucky and it's great, but in this case we do some a couple of different things. Now, the first thing that I see with this particular data source I'm going to change is the name of the data set. Tour de France general classification winners is a bit of a mouthful, so I'm going to change it to TDF with underscore winners. Okay, just to make it a bit easier when we're referring to a data set. Next thing I want to do, the column headers don't really describe much. So I want to change that. Okay, to use first row as headers, done that. Was that a bit quick? Let me just back that out again. So these are the changes I'm making to data set. You can see, uh, after I say after this session's over, you'll be able to actually look at this particular um, report and be able to see everything I've done. I'm not hiding anything. You'll be able to see it after I've done the presentation. Now, a couple of things we need to recognize and realize what we need to do with this data set is the Tour de France was not uh, run between the First World War and the Second World War. Sorry, in between the First World War and the Second World War. So we want to filter out those results. So I'm going to click on filter it. Don't return any data where it's no. First World War, Second World War. So we're only returning results that have people who have won the Tour de France. Okay, now in true Blue Peter fashion, I had to do some other work, but I've done that all already and I've got it waiting. So I'm not going to save a change here, I'm just going to close that and pull up the one that I've done earlier for you. And again, you'll get a copy of this, you can see exactly what I've done. So if I go into transform, transform data it takes me to the Power Query editor. Right, okay, so same, exactly the same data set, nothing different, but you'll notice there is some other changes I've made. For example, here, if you click on the gear icon, you can see what I've done. And what I've done here is when we imported the cyclist column, they just happened to have some of the cyclist name had the hash after it. So I've just replaced that value with um, nothing, just removed it effectively. So you can see exactly what I've done here. Now, one thing that uh, I did, did say we aren't writing any code, that's actually a bit of a, a cheat because what's happening in the background is the wizard actually writing the code for us. See all this here? That is what's required to import the data from the web page. But I didn't have to write a single item of that. I just had to tell it what web page to go to and what I wanted to import. It's just amazing. ETL without, run, without writing code, just oh. It's a dream come true, I have to say. So I'm going to close and apply now. And what's going to happen is it's going to extract the data from the web page, transform the data set that's coming from the web page and make the changes, and then load it into the Power BI desktop file. So I can see over here, I've got a set of fields from the, the uh, data set. If I look at the data set view, there's some, I can actually see the data sets that are loaded into this Power BI desktop file, so we can see them there. And if we look at the data relationships window, we're going to use that later on, but all we've got here is a single fact table which contains facts about who won the Tour de France. Okay, now you're probably saying, Robert, that's really exciting, but I want to see a report. Well, yes, let's start building a report now. Okay, so I'm going to hold down my left hand mouse button and I'm just going to drag this field onto the blank report canvas. Okay, fantastic. Now, 
Power BI is very clever and it's decided it's going to give me a table visualization. So if I pop this open, we have visualizations. These are all the visualizations built into Power BI. Okay, now Power BI is clever enough to know that I wanted a table visualization. So I'll just drag that across here like that. So I'm just going to drag in the cyclist, the distance in kilometers, distance in miles. Fantastic. Okay, now Power BI has done a, uh, what's something there we possibly didn't want, but it's wonderful, it's great. Even though I've got the table visualizations adding those fields, it's also added this totals. Now each visualization also has a whole list of other different formatting options. There is so much to explore. I'm so excited. If you've never looked at this, it's just incredible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch off the totals here. I'm not writing any code. I'm just using my mouse button to do this. It's just brilliant. It's fantastic. Uh, now, what we need to do is slice and dice the data by the country. So in this case here, I'm going to quickly use a country name from the data set, the TDF winners data set pop up here. Now, Power BI has decided, oh, it's a country name, which is correct. And it's recognized that and it's given me a map uh, visualization. I don't want that. The one I want to use, and this is what's great about Power BI, if you don't want it, you don't like that type of visual, you can change it. Ooh, dead easy. Select the visual and then select the visualization you want to change. Boom, done. It's as easy as that. That's what I love about Power BI. It makes it so easy for anyone to use. And as you see, what it's doing is filtering the data set according to the country we decided to filter by. In this case, we filter by Denmark. We get one, Brianna Reese. Colombia, we get the winner from 2019. I've got to Australia with Cadell Evans, who won in 2011. That's all it's doing. It's just filtering the data, but it's filtering everything else. Now, if you look at the report I'm trying to build, you're saying, oh, I guess I can, Robert, there's something missing. There's a flag missing. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I'm glad you spotted that. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to add another data set to the Power BI desktop file. Okay, so what I did earlier is I exported a list of the countries to Excel. I still love Excel. I use Excel for many things. Okay, so what we have here, um, I'm just going to quickly make one change, which I forgot about. Okay, so we're going to import data from this particular data set. So what we have here is a list of the countries and the flag URLs. Okay, so let me show you where the flag URL goes to. It's just, it's really, it's not really exciting, but it is exciting in a way because all we do, if we go to that one there, come on, do you want to go to it? It brings back a JPEG image of the flag for that particular country. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import this Excel spreadsheet into Power BI desktop file here. So I click on Excel. And say which one do you want to import? And I'm going to import that one there. And it's going to prompt say which worksheet do you want to import from? And it's going to prompt a second say, tell me, wonderful, you can do it. There we go, wonderful. So it's a flags worksheet. Now I need to transform the data because it's not quite exactly how I need it yet. Okay, so I'm going to make one more change. Let's transform the data back into Power BI Query Editor. Really simple. All I'm going to do, as you probably guessed already, use the first with headers. I love this. It just makes my life so easy and simple. Click on there. There we go. And if I click on close and apply, it will load the data into Power BI. So extract the data from the Excel spreadsheet, make the transformations request in the Power BI Query Editor, and then load the data into the Power BI desktop file. Now, that might not sound particularly exciting. So we've got two data sets though, one from an Excel spreadsheet and one from a web page in the same place. But the other thing that Power BI has done as well is it recognizes a relationship between the fact table we have here, which contains the facts about who won the Tour de France, but also a supporting dimension table. So for each row, so if they, for example, France, press escape there, we have one record. So it means that we're, it's making the data as compact as possible. This is all about dimensional modeling. And it's something they do in data warehousing. So we're actually building a data warehouse on the fly. Don't tell any data, data warehouse developers. They think it this sounds really complicated, but that's what we're doing. So we now have another data set. And what I would like to do is use the country data, the value of country name from here as my slicer. Just click on delete that one. 
Okay, and again, it's recognised it happens to be a country name. But I actually want to use this as a slicer. Okay, so pop again back there. And if I click on Belgium, you can see it's filtered for Belgium and Australia. Okay, wonderful. Now, you're now telling me, okay, Robert, that's fantastic, but it still doesn't look like the report that we saw earlier where you got the flag. So what we'll do now is we're going to do something rather special. Okay, so I'm going to go back to Power BI Desktop. Because one of the things about Power BI Desktop, even though you've got these visualizations that are built into the product and you import them automatically, they are all they become as part of the standard installation. The other thing I should say is you also got R and Python scripts. There are also a number of custom visualizations which you can get access to. Now, Microsoft made a conscious decision early on that they wanted to open source and give anyone the ability to create custom visuals. So there's a whole lot of free visualizations where the code is open source and you can see the code. So we go to the app source, I'm just clicking on there just right now, there's a whole raft of other visualizations. The one we will happen to use here is a chiclet slicer, that's the one I want to use. Now to add it, it's very simple, this one to be built with Microsoft Corporation. I should also say to get into the app source, Microsoft have to review the source code. So if it's come from the app source, Microsoft have looked at the source code and they are happy that it's okay. But I would do your own research and double check to make sure you're comfortable with that. So I'm going to change this to be the chiclet slicer by clicking on here. Just change the change it over. Now it doesn't look particularly exciting, does it? We still don't have the flags. I'm glad you asked about the flags because what I'm going to do now, watch this, this chiclet slice on the left hand side. I'm going to drag the flag URL field down to the image section and I'm just going to drop it there and watch what happens. We've now got flags and chiclet slicer. Now I said before, there's a number of things you can do in terms of formatting. So I'm going to quickly change this up. I'm going to change it to a horizontal uh, orientation. I'm going to have one row. I'm going to switch off the multiple selection. That just means that when someone clicks on the visualization, they only select one country at a time. So that's the way I would like them to do it. You don't have to do that. You can change it to suit yourself. That is so much to explore. It was fantastic. I'm going to change the text size to eight. I'm going to change this to 50 and the height to 95. Okay. Oh, this is just amazing. And watch what has happened. Okay. So I'll just make this a bit narrower and drag that down. And I forgot to switch off the row header because we really don't need to tell it's country. So it's kind of obvious from the country flags that is countries we're selecting here. Okay, so if I click on France, it filters just with this who run from France, Denmark, Colombia, Belgium, just as before, and rather like the report. Okay, this is fantastic. I've done no code, all I've done is drag and drop a visual, custom visual, either the custom visual to my report. So if I drag the country down to here, you'll see we've got a country populated. It's automatically recognized as a country name. Now, uh, which one do I want? Do I want the shape map? Well, no, I don't, because I wanted to talk about shape maps. If you've never used shapes, uh, you'll understand what a shape is and the implications. Yes, you can use shapes in Power BI. Uh, we just happen to want a fill, filled map. Okay, so what it's going to do is recognize Australia, call it a, a filled map. If I click on another country, it's going to change the filter context. It's going to change it. Okay, this is how easy it is to build reports in Power BI. It's just amazing and fantastic. Now, I did say I was gonna write some code today. So I'm not gonna write an awful lot of code. What I'm gonna add is a bit of DAX. DAX is very powerful and I could actually spend an entire hour, if not an entire day, just talking about DAX. In this context here, we're going to add it as an uh, aggregation. Okay, it's a bit of a summary. And I'm gonna add two DAX measures. Now, if you're looking at the DAX, I'm just gonna add a new measure here. You're thinking, mm, that looks like Excel formulas to me, Robert, and you would be 100% right. Because when they created DAX, they wanted it to look like Excel formulas so that people coming from Excel would feel comfortable with it. And all it's going to do here, it's going to use a distinct count on this particular data set and cyclists to get a distinct count of a number of cyclists. That's all it's going to do, okay? You'll see what that means in a second. And the other one I'm going to use, I say, if you look this up, you'll see a full explanation on the internet, so you'd like to think out, is this one here. I'm going to add another 
to measure. Okay, just catch up with me, fantastic. And this one is just gonna count the number of countries, distinct countries. Okay, and to work with these measures is very simple, just same as before, we just drag them and drop them onto the report canvas. And it says, oh, it's a number, so therefore you want a bar chart, but no, I don't. I want to change this to a card. There we go, so just make that a simple card. And drag the other one down, pop it there, make it a simple card. See how easy it is to do things in Power BI? It's just so simple and fantastic. So if I click on, say, Belgium, you'll notice that there's 10 race winners, 18 between them. If you click on, say, Luxembourg, we have four race winners and five. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four winners, five races between them. The thing about the DAX expressions is they are filter context aware. So when we filter it, it will automatically update the calculation and change it on the fly. Now, oh, that's right, there was a problem with Great Britain, wasn't there? Hmm. There's a reason for that, okay? Because the data imported was obviously Great Britain. But what it's doing in the background is it's looking at the country uh, field and saying, can I find that country in Bing? So when it goes looking for Great Britain, it can't find it because it's actually United Kingdom. And yes, I did do that deliberately because I wanted to do this. I wanted to just illustrate something to you. So I'm just going to change that to United Kingdom. I'm just going to save that. And that makes no difference at all. The reason for that is that the data is being disconnected. The data that's been imported from the Excel spreadsheet is now stored within the Power BI desktop file. However, we can update and refresh the data. So if I, there's a couple of ways of doing this. A simple one here is to update all the data sets in the Power BI desktop file. This can take a little while depending on the size of the data. Okay, can be quite risky and hopefully it will work. So it's going to go out to the Excel spreadsheet. So the Excel spreadsheet and the web page and update the data from both. Okay, and watch what happens to Great Britain. Because something quite special is going to happen in a second. Okay, there we go. It's gone. Because what it's done is gone out to the Excel spreadsheet and it's updated the data. Now, we're not going to cover incremental refreshes and all the other lovely things you can do with Power BI. I just want to illustrate that to you that it's disconnected from the data source. That was all. Okay, fantastic. I think we're almost there. Let's have a quick look at the report. Oh, hang on. We've done that. We've done it. Oh, I haven't done that and I haven't done that. Let me quickly just add the bar chart. So if I drag this across, boom, it's done. Drag that down. And what I haven't added is the final URL here, the URL for each individual cyclist. And yes, by now you're probably thinking, oh yeah, he's done something already. Yes, I did. I punted, oh, I did. I took the, the cyclist name, put them into Excel from Power, I took it from Power BI and I filtered it. And then I did some Excel magic. I still love Excel. So I've got a cyclist name. I've got this bit of text here, which is base URL. Then I've done a bit of Excel. I've just replaced the space with an underscore, concatenated B and C together. You'll get to see the spreadsheet. If you'll see both what I've done. I created this unique URL for each individual cyclist. Okay, so as before, I'm gonna import this data into Power BI. Okay, I click on open. And it's gonna come up in a second because it's just making me wait. It's gonna make me sweat there, didn't it? It's making me sweat. Again, we just got to click the transform it because we want to make the first row of the column header. So let's do that. It'll take me into Power BI Query Editor. Boom, fantastic. So we'll just do that quickly. You can do it, go on. Fantastic and wonderful. Use first row as headers, close and apply. So again, it's gonna extract the data from the Excel spreadsheet make the transformations we defined within the Power BI query editor, and then load that data into the Power BI desktop file. So we now have three, not one, not two, but three individual data sets within the one place. So we have the ones from the Excel spreadsheet, the one from the web page, and the other one from the Excel spreadsheet. They're different Excel spreadsheets. And the other thing it's also done is it's recognized there's a relationship between the cyclist in the fact table and the supporting dimension because one cyclist may have won the Tour de France more than once. Uh, if you think about Eddie Merckx, for example, or various other uh, 
Bernard Hinault, who's also won the Tour de France more than once. We don't want to have the, the URL for that particular cycle repeated many times. We just want it once. But what it's doing here as well, it's building a little star dimension. So we've got our central fact table with supporting dimension tables around it. We're doing data warehousing on the fly. This is just brilliant. It's just fantastic. So if I go back to the Wikipedia URL, if I drag in the final URL and drop it here. Okay, uh, oh, hang on a second, that didn't work. I was supposed to have a clickable link. Oh, that, the problem with that is actually I forgot to tell Power BI exactly what kind of data it is. So I've clicked on the, um, the field, I'm just gonna tell it's a web URL, and all of a sudden it's going to recognize and say, oh, you want to click on it, that's a clickable URL. Brilliant, click on that, we're gonna open up on a web page. So there we go, excellent. No code, no nothing. Okay, so what have I done in 20 minutes? I have built uh, the report I said I would build. Now, the one thing you're probably shouting at the screen right now, Robert, that's dull, it's dull, dull, dull. But I need color, my boss wants color. Yes, I totally agree with you. So if you've used PowerPoint before, you'll be familiar with templates. We just have to have templates added to Power BI now, out of the box. So here's a template I've just added. If you want to customize that template, then, oh, no problem at all. This is just great. You can suddenly start creating templates and apply to any of your Power BI reports. So if you've got a particular corporate theme or something for a customer, you can do it there. And if you're running out of inspiration, you want someone to inspire you, you can go out and uh, go to the theme gallery because people have actually given away themes. And I said, oh, fantastic. Why don't you try my theme? I can download those themes and customize them as you wish. This is just brilliant. Now, the other thing I once did for a customer, we were doing a bid for a particular project. And we said, well, why don't we uh, customize the page? I said, well, that's a good idea. Why don't we look at the page? Yeah. There we go, wonderful. And I said, well, why don't we just pop on the background? Okay, so I had an image to the background, just had to be that to the client we were looking at. So let's pop our image to the background and it's not there. Well, the reason for this fact it's not there is because the transparent set to 100%. There we go. So you can see you can do all sorts of things with a Power BI desktop. It's amazing what you can do. And I haven't even covered visualizations, what you can do with them. We haven't talked about using mobile phone layout. We can customize this report to be optimized for a phone. I haven't talked about filters, bookmarks. There's so much to discover. I'm so jealous. It's just amazingly wonderful. So I have to head back to the presentation. I say you will get a copy of this report so you'll be able to see what I've done and be able to take it apart and ask me any questions. So I'm just going to, not going to save that. I'm going to pop back to close that, close it off then. Okay, and go back, back to presentation because I think I'm just going to double check. Are there any questions, Brian? Yes, I've got one here from QA about the uh, chiclet. So uh, one of our delegates has asked uh, if do you need to, to reinstall the chiclet every time you uh, open the report? No, what happens is when you add a custom visual to a report, it stays with that report. It's a bit like adding data to the report. So you import the custom visual and it stays there. Um, so it isn't transferable to other reports as such. So if you port, say, the chiclet slicer for the Tour de France report, it will stay as part of that report until you delete it and remove it. Um, so that's a good question. It's one of the things that I just unfortunately keep using and never think about. So there we go. So it's a fantastic feature. Is there any other questions? Or are we okay to move on? No, just move on. That's fine. Brilliant. Fantastic. Okay, so welcome back to the presentation. Wonderful to have you back. So when Microsoft launched their, this particular product, they had a marketing term, which was five minutes to sign up. That's to sign up to the service and five minutes to wow. I should say about the service that you can't sign up using Gmail or Hotmail or certain other uh, domains. So just be careful about that. But what they meant when they're talking about five minutes to sign up and five minutes to wow, it's really simple. They believe that anybody can get insights into their data. And this is about empowering the end user with a free tool Remember, Power BI Desktop is completely free. You'd pay nothing for it and you can sign up for the service as well. Uh, now, one of the things I meant to say, and I forgot to say about the report. Now, even though I'm sharing the report on the internet just now, this is a free option. The downside of this particular one being free is it's available to anybody. Anybody can see this report. 
that has the URL and therefore anybody can see the data. Just to be aware of that, that's one thing that I really should have pointed out earlier. Now, I know I keep talking about Lego, but every time I think about trying to describe Power BI, I think about Lego because you have all these little building blocks and if you put them together, you can make something really fantastic and complex from starting a very basic, simple building blocks. So we were comparing Excel to Power BI. So maybe one of the questions we should have posed now is where does Power BI excel? And yes, I loved that particular pun when I came up with it earlier. So why should you use Power BI over Excel maybe? Well, we've already shown it can import data from a wide variety of, da wide variety of data sources. The ability to import data is so good, it's now built into Excel 2016. Power BI is very flexible. It's amazing what you can do with Power BI once you learn with the basics. It's also something that having knowledge of Power BI is something that you can take from job to job. It's a transferable skill that many people are looking for now. It can store a huge amount of data. Uh, when I was looking to see the maximum amount you can store on a Power BI desktop file, they said essentially it just depends on the amount of RAM you can install on your machine. I would probably say maybe one to two gigabytes in terms of a Power BI desktop file was probably about reasonable. If you're going beyond that, Give us a wee chat at the Academy. You'll have a, a discussion about things we can look at. It's fantastic at uh, compressing data. It uses something called the Verti Pack Engine, which is designed to compress data very, very well. Um, now, if you're popping on the service, I think the maximum size of data set you can have on the service is 100 gigabytes. But if you get into that size, I think you're starting to get into some serious territory, in which case come and speak to the uh, to iAcademy and we can help you uh, maximize your investment. X, uh, Power BI is fantastic at analyzing data. Hopefully you begin to see that. But one of the things I think that Power BI is brilliant at is visualizing data. You may have to go and present a case to your uh, chief executive. They may give you just 30 seconds to get your point across. And yes, you could get your point across with a table of numbers. But if you were able to show that visually using charts and various other things they can explore, it means it's much easier to get the point across because we are not, as human beings, we're actually looking for things that are visual. We like things that are visual. That's how our mind is actually um, designed. Now, one of the things we haven't touched upon and we're never going to touch upon because we don't have time is time intelligence. Very often in the reports, people want to see, well, how are we doing compared with this quarter last year? How are we doing with this time last year? And being able to compare things and time intelligence is something that's built into Power BI from the start. And there is so much to make it so much easier in Power BI, trust me. Now, I personally think the Power BI interface is very easy and simple to use. Anyone can pick it up. Oh, it's all drag and drop clicking on buttons. You don't have to necessarily write codes. The other thing we haven't covered is so many of the incredible cloud-based features, incremental refreshes, artificial intelligence, sharing of data, security. Oh, there's so much to explore, it's just fantastic. And one of the things I really love, and yes, I am a Star Trek fan, I make no apologies for that. In one of the films, uh, Scotty was asked to do something on the computer. So he walked up, obviously in Star Trek, everyone talks to the computer. So he started talking to the computer and the guy said, well, no, you need to use the mouse. So he picked up the mouse, started speaking to it. Where am I going with this? In Power BI Desktop, it is possible for a user to type in a question. For example, it could say, tell me who won the Tour de France from France or tell me who won the Tour de France from Spain and Power BI Desktop can understand that question and either return the results or return a graph or show it to the customer. It even has the ability now, there's a visualization I understand being added this month that will describe the data in plain English. It just blows my mind and this is all free. Uh, Power BI can tell you when data changes and give you an automated alert. It also has security built in. So you can design a report, say, for a sales manager, so you can see all, his, all the people underneath them, see all the results, see how they're doing. And the same report, if one of, their, the, ter one of uh, the salespeople signs in, they only see their result. 
on this, and it's exactly the same report, just configured to only show the appropriate results depending on which user's logged in. And that's all built into Power BI. And again, the whole idea of Power BI is to enable the end user to do it themselves. That's the whole purpose of this incredible tool that's given away for free. It's to enable you to do BI, to get the insights into your business, to get your insights into the data that you know so well and be able to visualize that and share with other people and eventually pass back to the IT department to share with the entire organization. That just makes me so excited because the people that work closely with the data are the ones that understand it the best. Now, there's also a huge user group out there. There's lots and lots of people using Power BI and they love answering questions and helping people to maximize their investment with Power BI. Next, there's something in it for everybody. From a complete newbie who's never seen Power BI can start using it immediately within five minutes and start getting the insights all the way through to someone who's prepared to spend time understanding DAX, understanding the power of DAX, but also possibly looking at the Power BI Query Editor and starting to look at things like M, Power Query, Power Query Language that I showed you briefly because there's so much power in here as well. So something for everybody from the programmer who wants to be able to explore lots of things all the way down to a newbie. Now, I showed you how to build this report and what I've got here is a screenshot from my phone. I've got a box standard Android phone, and all I did is I downloaded the application, put it on my phone, and did a screenshot. And this is what I get. And the interactivity you get is exactly the same as I demonstrated on the web. This is a little GIF showing you what happens on my phone. No, this is what happens on my phone. And this is available for Android, iOS, and any mobile uh, operating system. So you can have it on your tablet, you can have it on your phone, you can have it on a computer. And this is not even one that's been optimized for a phone. This is just this one we built today. Okay, now I know that Excel happens to have a mobile application. This is one, this is how it looks on my phone. I know what I would prefer personally. I don't think I'd be wanting to use this to visualize data. I'd be wanting to use this to impress my friends down at the golf course. Right, I wouldn't want to use that. We did say that we would talk about money. Yeah, we have to talk about mine. Everything, as I say, I've shown you today is absolutely 100% free. There's no money involved. If you're sharing the, the report as I've done on the web, again, be aware of the security because there's no security involved. Anybody can see it. And again, you can download Power BI Desktop for free. You can also set up an account with the Power BI service for free. The mobile application is also free. <laughs> How much are they give away for free? Now, if you want to share your report securely with somebody else, first thing you have to do is purchase a Power BI Pro license. It currently costs £7.50 a month for commercial applications. If you're a charity, you do get it cheaper, but you speak to Microsoft about that. And then once you've got that, you can then share your reports with anybody else who has a Power BI Pro license. Now, if you happen to have Teams, or SharePoint, you can embed that report into Teams or SharePoint, and anybody else has a Power BI Pro license can also view that report. All for £7.50 per person per month. Not much to pay. Hey, what can I say? They've got to make the money some way. So you've fallen asleep for the entire presentation. You've just woken up. So let's do a quick summary. So too long, didn't read. What did I talk about for the last hour? Right, we talked about Excel versus Power BI, and we compared the two tools. Now for me, it's not so much about why one tool is better than the other. Each tool is designed for a particular purpose, very much like the cabinet makers uh, workshop. They know that chisel, that small chisel is really good for fine detail, but the bigger chisel is good to maybe chip out something else. And that particular saw is really good for this particular function, that function. So it's about what tool is best for the purpose. And for me, even though I said it's been a grudge match, I think it's a marriage made in heaven where you can do a lot of the lifting and shifting using Excel. So you've already done a lot of the data analysis and you provide that clean data set to Power BI.
and Power BI Desktop can then visualize the codes that I very much doubt Microsoft will ever port back in the visualizations from Power BI back into Excel. So use them. It's a bit like a marriage made in heaven. One is really good at visualizations and be able to do data warehousing and displaying the data. Excel does the grunt work. Uh, uh, sorry, at I Academy love talking about data and business intelligence. That was one thing that fascinates me. And this is very much, it's not about uh, one tool's better than another because we have expertise in a wide variety of areas, Tableau, business objects, Alteryx, Dom, uh, Domo, MicroStrategies and others. It's about what tool is best for that function. And we also have an entire page about where you can get some details about Power BI. I've also taught, I also did a blog, four blog posts on Power BI licensing, trying to help people understand it. And it gives you a link to where you can download Power BI desktop. Now, I'm almost finished. I want to say thank you for, being, for uh, listening to me. I love talking about this. I love talking about data. I love talking about tools that are perfect for working with data, but I'm almost finished, but there's more. There's lots of resources out there. This guy in a cube has an entire YouTube channel dedicated to doing 10 minute videos on, here's something at Power BI you can do. Or this one here, a friend of mine shared, a colleague, work colleague shared with me about effective dashboards and Power BI. If you fancy going to a conference to learn about Power BI, then may I suggest going to SQL Bits 2020 this year in London. They also have recorded a lot of their sessions and a lot of sessions cover Power BI and DAX as well. And they're free. So go to that particular URL and you'll find the details there. There's also two lovely gentlemen from Italy called Alberto Ferrari and Marco Russo. And they talk about DAX. That's all they talk about. And they, what they can do with DAX just makes my mind just go, wow. It's incredible. They've got free articles. There's paid for training. There's also books and other things. I'd recommend that's the best resource out there. Microsoft also is not the same Microsoft. I once said this in a tweet many years ago, it ended up at Microsoft conference rather embarrassingly. Microsoft are listening to their users. I'll repeat that because Microsoft are asking people to come and say, what would you like to add to Power BI? And then the Power BI program managers, as you can see one of them here saying, well, yeah, we're gonna implement that particular feature. I'm gonna start it now, or we're considering that one. And I have watched features being suggested. I have voted, I personally have upvoted you, vote for which ones you like, and they implement them. This is not the Microsoft of old that I used to work with. This is a new Microsoft. And then there's an entire community, help with Power BI. Then he goes entire, there's forums dedicated to that. There is also the themes gallery. There's also data stories gallery. You think that my report looks rubbish? Yeah, you're right. It's Dull and boring. There's some amazing data stories out there and they'll give you inspiration of what you can do with Power BI. There's also things that are script because people are using R and Python to add benefit and value to their Power BI reports. And yes, I have finished. Fantastic. I love talking about data and I love helping people to find tools to help them understand their data. Now, I'm going to hand back to Brian in a second because this is the stump the chump time. Um, if you have any questions for me, I would love to hear them. These are my contact details. Please feel free to reach out and contact me. Otherwise, I will stop talking now. Otherwise, I'll talk for the rest of the day about this. Thank you very much, Brian. I'll hand back to you. Thanks much, Robert. That was great. Um, okay, do we have any questions I want to ask at the moment at all? Any questions? Nope. Oh, fantastic. Okay, oh, well then. I think that's us then. Well, thanks again, Robert, for that tremendous presentation. Um, I guess it just remains for me to say thank everybody for attending today. Thank you for taking the time to uh, attend the webinar. And uh, we'll be sending on a link with the um, webinar in the next few days. Okay, thanks much, everybody. Cheers then. Bye-bye. Thank you, Mike. Yay!